Hey guys, happy Friday. Welcome to season four of the Collaboration Conversation, a listener supported video podcast where Christian artists, entrepreneurs, and friends share about their upcoming projects and how they are using the gifts and talents that God has given them. To what end? To share the good news of King Jesus, of course. Amen. And today we are so excited because we have special guest Brandy Mage with us. Brandy is a wife, a mother of two high school kids, a friend, not only just a friend, but she's mom's best friend. She's a PTO mom and a survivor of triple negative breast cancer. Brandy, thank you so much for being with us today. Welcome. Thank you for having me. We are so excited to talk to you about your journey and your life. And so as we get started, just tell us a little bit about you and your family. Let's see. This will be year 21 that I'll be married to my husband. Congratulations. So, that's awesome. awesome. I know. That's like a pretty, I'm like 21 years. Yeah. A uh, long time. <laughs> yes. And then, you know, I have, I have two teenagers. I have one that will be turning 18 on the 31st of May. Yep. And then I'll have one that's four days later turns 15. So I'll, so I'll be cool. an adult mom and a oh. <laughs> teenager mom of a girl. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, well, let's see. What else about me? Um, right now, I have a, I've jumped into a new job that that kind of uh, d- did not even expect. So, and it's in my hometown. It's like eleven minutes from home, which is an oh, amazing. Community. Nice. So, yeah, that is awesome. Okay, well, so you and I met in two thousand fifteen. Yes. And you were right in the middle of your battle with cancer. Yes. Do you um, remember when I joined the church? <laughs> I do. It was Easter Sunday that year. Yes. And you had Izzy standing in front of you because we do this long line where everybody comes and greets you and welcomes you. And I had, I don't know if I had met you yet. I hadn't. I met you at um, Trey and Laura's party. Party. That was after the Memorial Day. And, um, but anyway, but you were having Izzy shake everybody's hand because you were like, I can't yeah, I was, deal I with all like- these germs. <laughs> were, were you wearing a mask before it was fashionable? Yes, I was. Yes. <laughs> Everybody wonder why. <laughs> yeah. Well, you started that trend. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> Sorry, well, and I and I can't remember, but you did have two different wigs. Were you, Were you in a long wig that day? Yes, I was in a long wig that day. Yeah. And sometimes I come on Wednesday nights in a short wig, and we were visiting the church at the time. So think about all the people out there thinking about my husband. Wait, <laughs> hey, the short haired lady. Wait, <laughs> last week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's you funny. you um. You always looked uh, gorgeous. Ow. Well, so, and I know that, you know, part of this process for you in fighting cancer has been that you've really become this ambassador and kind of a, a spokesperson as well. But start at the beginning. How how did yeah. you find out and, and all of that? And tell us tell us your journey. Yes. Yeah, so that summer of 2014, taking the kids to the rec pool and, you know, slathering on all the sunscreen and that kind of stuff, I kind of felt something in my right breast. And I was like, just kind of, Hmm, this feels weird. I wonder what this is, whatever. And I uh, kind of didn't think about it. Still kind of started feeling it, having a little bit of pain issues, like come the end of September and was like, better go and get this checked. So I did. They were freaked out. They were like, we're going to get you an ultrasound and a mammogram. And I was only 35 at the time. I'm wow. um, almost 36 and I uh, actually was diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer on my 36th birthday. Yeah. So, yeah. Jeez. Terrible birthday. One oh, I yeah. won't ever forget for sure. Right. Yeah. So Yeah. So I had to um, go and do all the things with the oncologist and biopsies. And um, it was kind of crazy when you think of breast cancer, you think of like one type that's breast cancer and that's the end of it. no. There's a ton of different ones that yeah. I was had. I have learned through the years now of all the different types, but uh, triple negative breast cancer is one of the most aggressive breast cancers. Um, there's no target treatment for it, but from when I was diagnosed in 14 to now, they've come a long way. Um, I was actually in a study with the uh, Sarah Cannon Research Institute. I know it's right. a mouthful, but um, basically... They did all my, my drugs, my chemo medicine, the study stuff, and then they would send it over to uh, Tennessee Oncology in Nashville, where I'd have to get it administered. And usually breast cancer is like four to six treatments. She said 16. I was oh like, oh my gosh. Wait, say that again? Yeah. Six, right. 
And so, yeah, so I had to have 12 weekly ones. Uh, I had to go in every Tuesday. My husband and I deemed that Tuesday day date. Really. Yeah. Not, not very fun. Try, trying but, your best to make that positive. Yeah. yeah, but we were trying to make it positive. So yeah. We did that for 12 weeks. I took a study drug the morning and night on top of chemo weekly. And then I think at 12 weeks, we stopped and did a breast MRI and the tumor had shrunk from 3.8 centimeters to 0.7 centimeters, which was wow. a really big win for us. Yeah. That study. And then I had four other ones that were every other week. They call that the red devil. I know everybody knows what that one is. You feel terrible. Terrible and, after. Uh, yeah. In the, in the middle of those four, I ended up having to have a blood transfusion. So, oh, I kind of remember that. Yeah, and you, could, that, and you couldn't do the the treatment that week. Yeah, well, I didn't do it on Tuesday. I right. was determined. I was like, if I feel better enough, can I come back Thursday? Yeah, we try again. And she kind of shoved her off and was like, yeah, whatever. Well, guess what? I got my treatment on Thursday. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah, so I tracked along. But anyhow, um, I finished chemo in April of fifteen. Then I joined the church at. Or um, you were talking about earlier. Yeah. Had my uh, double mastectomy and my in, I had the expanders put in May 4th of 2015. Wow. I had the exchange in uh, August of that year. And then January of 16, wow. I had to go in and have another uh, reconstructive surgery because they were so aggressive and uh, the man getting my double mastectomy, they had to fix the right side again. So. Oh, yeah. Geez. Crazy. The last surgery I had was uh, February of 2018. So all has been well since then. The- yeah. Good. And so you go annually. I mean, you for a little while, you went more than that. Yes. I started out, you have to go every three months and then you graduate to every six month checkups. Yeah. Uh, and then you get to go every year. So I'm on my yearly checkups. I'm actually having one on Tuesday. Tuesday. Yes. So- yeah. Wow. We're, we're definitely praying. Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay, so one of the one of the things that you talk about when you share your testimony about mm-hmm. having gone through this was what your husband said to you when you got your diagnosis. Yes, it was the craziest thing. Like we were sitting there and it, I told you it was on my birthday. Yep. You have triple negative breast cancer. It's not great, but we're going to get through this. So her, I'll never forget her name was Naomi and she gave me this little pamphlet and everybody knows it's the look good, feel good campaign. And it's where companies give any type of people that have cancer, they give them like a beauty kit mm, and yeah. so you can feel better. Right. So she was yeah. being so sweet. I grabbed that pamphlet. I went and like threw it in the trash and my husband was to the left of me and he looked at me and she shut the door and I was like, I lost it. I was mad, scared. I was all the emotions. I was a hot mess, honestly. Mm, yeah, yeah. Hearing that. And he looks at me, knows that I'm really upset. I've been through the ladies pamphlet in the trap. <laughs> and that's not like my character anyway. At all. But, uh, not at all. <laughs> he looked at me and goes, I can't wait to see how God is going to use you. Aww. And I was like, I don't want God to use me. Like, <laughs> like I was pouting. I was really upset. I didn't know yeah. how to feel, but I didn't like how I felt at that moment. Oh, yeah. And when he said that, it's so funny because it's such a, a sweet and thoughtful and sweet comment that he was trying to, I guess, encourage me or comfort me and like, it's going to be okay. But how his little comment has been such the whole I yep. guess the uh, engine of my journey because God has done amazing things through, through yes. it. It's been like crazy. Yeah. So. Well, so, what, so, well, no, I do have one quick question. At what point did you, did your, did you lose your hair or did you shave your head? I lost it. They gave you all this spiel, you know, when you start your treatment, it was literally, I started November 18 of 2014. Okay. And by December, the, Ninth ish, I was already like just yeah have lumps of it pulled out. Jeez, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. and you already know this, and and you're if you're if folks are on uh, Facebook, they can see your page. But you are absolutely the most gorgeous bald woman <laughs> uh, ever <laughs> that the guy has ever made. You're so sweet. On our anniversary of that year in 2015, 
he did end up when it was coming out, like I was trying to like hold on to my hair as long as I could. Honestly, yeah. I really was. Yeah. Um, that was one of my biggest stressors was my hair and it's beauty. Cause you know, we defined ourselves, you know, as a woman, like we have hair, but, and yeah. that was a huge struggle. Like I could have got rid of the boobs, taken all the things, but like, don't take that. Like I struggled with that. And, yeah. um, that was a very hard journey, but it happened. And, but he shaved my head on our December 15th of that year on our anniversary. Okay. That's the picture you were talking about that I shared on my blog that I did. Okay. And I looked like GI Jane on. It, it's I true. Like I, I mean, I, I hear what you're saying, but you were absolutely stunning. So, I, and those pictures, the ones that you have for your, your background or whatever are just sweet as can be. Oh, thanks. Yeah, that yeah. was for the Susan G. Komen. Uh, it was one of the campaigns that year of uh, February. We went in February of that year and took photos of this well-known um, photographer in Nashville donated all of her time. Oh, and she nice. wanted to uh, capture all of us in yeah. our beauty, uh, bald and not. And, yeah. <laughs> So it was crazy. Spencer wasn't even supposed to be in some of those photos, which was funny. He was just there watching me and the photographer just, I guess, seemed like the love or just the pride that he was feeling, like watching me do this, like model photos, you know. And uh, she's like, he came up and like kissed me during one of the things while she was fixing the lighting. And she loved it. She's like, can we take some with him? Aww. And so that's how we had those in my background. Yeah. Oh my gosh, and they're awesome. I mean, if you, if, y'all, if you haven't seen them, go go right now to Brandy's page. That, <laughs> yeah. That's so good. Well, so there's there have been a few other opportunities. Um, yeah. You were uh, in a calendar. Yes, that was that Susan G. Komen um, calendar campaign, and it ran for it was like a two year calendar, sixteen and seventeen. So I'm only five two, so I'm very short. So. Modeling was not in the cards for me at all. <laughs> so, you know, to be a cow, I made Miss December 2017. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. awesome. I had to go through a very uh, big ordeal, but hey, there's yeah. proof. There's a calendar and I'm in it. So, yeah. Well, and your daughter's a model. So, yeah, yes. that, you know, she's, she's going to take after you on that one. Well, oh. so, but you also have done like, I'm pretty sure some fundraisers for C- Susan G. Komen. Yes, we did some. We did like it was um, something in Green Hills Mall where we did like a fashion show and like uh, Macy's that year donated all pink clothing and we got to model that for them and just raise money for the Middle Tennessee chapter of Susan G. Coleman. Oh, long as with the walks in October, too. Right. Okay. And you like you walked the runway, right? I did. I'm telling you, five <laughs> two. <laughs> yeah. All, all of these modeling opportunities. That, that is so funny. Did you ever think ever that you were like someday I'd like to be a model? Never. Never. <laughs> One of those things where Spencer was like, I can't wait to see how God's going to use you. It was like yeah. uh, calendar check. Yeah. Walking the runway. Check. No. Nice. Well, now uh, this yeah. might be unrelated, but didn't I mean I've I've seen the video. You guys did one for your insurance company. Yes. So it was crazy. So I um back up when I found out that I was had when I was diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer, and he said, "I can't wait to see how God's going to use you." Spencer was saying that something came over me where I had a piece. But God wanted me to be transparent in that. Okay. So I know a lot of women or people that go through cancer, they don't, they're quiet. They don't talk about it. Right. For whatever reason, I was like, hey, you want to know? So I blogged weekly. It was uh, Brandy Mage at uh, like brandymage.blogspot.com. Someone told me about to do that. So literally I blogged weekly, if not more, whatever events were going on in my life. Right. during that time. So yeah. And it's still out there, right? It is. Yeah. You can go and watch it. I actually, when people uh, come to me and say, Hey, can I share your story with others? Can I get your blog? And I always give them that link. Yeah. Yeah. You're always doing interviews and all kinds of stuff with the newspapers and magazines and um, well, but you were going to say with with the insurance, did they see your blog? Yes. So for whatever reason, um, the company, I um, met a share, the Christian care ministries, that's who we had. We switched in July, right before I was diagnosed. So uh, we were like, oh, my gosh, how is this going to work? Like, kind of oh, thing. Oh, yeah. 
but um, he was Googling me or whatever the paperwork had come across and he found my blog. And they reached out and they were like, Brandy, this is so-and-so from MediShare. We would love to fly up to Tennessee and interview your family. And like, your your blog was amazing. I love how you're so transparent and like shared your story. We would love to share your story on our ministry. And so we said, yeah. And they flew up from down south in Florida and came up and spent a whole day with us filming us. Um, just about our experience with MediShare from, uh, you know, going in and having to pay your co-pays to surgeries and all that kind of stuff. So, wow. Yeah. Well, and this isn't really a commercial for MediShare, but right. <laughs> they, they treated you really well. I mean, it, yes, it, it was a great, did. it was yeah. a great um, experience for you guys, I think. Yeah. They gave us like a few months free, um, I guess, service. Uh, for doing that interview and everything. And it's so sweet now to have it. I can go back on it and look and like see where, how far I've come. Yes. Yeah. So it's do you, awesome. Do you ever do that with the blog? Yeah. Do you ever do yeah, go back I and actually, it? I can't remember the one as one of the last times I posted, but I was like, I probably need to post my, when I cut my hair off recently. So I'll probably do something like that soon. So just tell us real quick about cutting your hair off recently. Yes. So it's this been about a month now, but I cut 11 inches off. And wow. Don't it. Yeah. Two ponytails because I have some thick hair. So, yeah. Well, and you do that. I mean, that's not the first time you've done that. No. Right before I was going to have um, chemo, I cut it off and had yeah. two ponytails. And yeah. so I was like, when my hair gets as long as it was pre yeah treatment, I'm going to cut it off and donate it again. So I've donated four ponytails in my journey. So yeah, that amazing. is awesome. <laughs> well, so we, you know, we've talked about how God has used you in your journey with, with being diagnosed with cancer and all the, the incredible things that you've gotten to do. But I know that when we go through things like this, that he also puts it on our heart to reach out to those who are going to go through it or who are, who are currently going through it. And so I want to talk to you a little bit about your outreach um, yeah. to other cancer patients, um, yeah. starting with uh, your Christmas stocking ministry and, and yes. how you participate in that. So share with us a little bit about that. That ministry is called uh, Stuffed with Love Project. And that's where it's can- cancer survivors and their families, like myself and my family, we go once a year and meet at a local hospital. It's usually in Murfreesboro um, over that area because that's like a, a great location for everyone. And we stuff stockings. We have stuffed. I know when we started out that year, it's like our sixth or seventh year, we stuffed like 300 stockings. And we have in the last two years, even through COVID, we did like 400 stockings. Wow. And what we do is we put like little things that we would need while we're in treatment, like tissues because your nose runs or a little word search because you're bored to death getting your treatment, doing a crossword puzzle or a little devotion card, um, little candies to suck on, bottles of water, mittens, chapstick for the dry. So little things like that. And people donate all up kinds of things. I've had some people donate little um, olive wood from um, Israel crosses and we put those in there so we do that every year we start out probably around October just to remind everybody hey if you want to give to our um, stuff with love project go ahead and we all collect it then we all take it to that location we all stuff we look we are like probably a hundred little elves all in there (laughs) in an assembly line stuffing stockings so and how I got into that was um, that Christmas of 2014, I was in there getting my treatment and uh, my friend, well, she's my friend now, but at the time her name was Jen. She came by and was like, hey, would you like a stocking? And she kind of shared her little story that you know, as she was a cancer survivor and she received a stocking and so and so. And so I told her, thank you so much. And I said, when I get better, I'm going to come and help you guys. So I've been doing that since 16. 2016, yeah. Wow. That's so cool. I think there are three <laughs> other elves that you take with you at, at least one time. Do maybe twice. I take my husband and my two kiddos, and they love to do it. Now, um, when we go to uh, give out the stockings, due to COVID now, they 
of course, it's only me. We can only drop them off at the front by a Christmas tree mm-hmm. and that kind of stuff. But we used to be able to go into the treatment centers. I would always choose to pick the treatment center that I received my stocking. I just wanted to get back to that um, oncology department and just uh, see their faces and actually talk and mingle and give them yeah. hope. Be like, hey, yeah. I was where you were a few years ago. Right. And here's a little gift, you know. Totally. So you were totally right. You take your husband and your kids, but I was thinking of your husband's band. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. And so this is pre-COVID too. We got to do, I was like, hey, um, cause he's a musician. And I was like, hey, do you think your friends, you know, Jason and Matt would want to come and like sing to the cancer patients? Cause we sing like two or three, just little Christmas carols, just to kind of have some Christmas cheer and just brighten yeah. everyone's that one time someone's day that day. And so they sing and they get applause and it just yeah. makes them happy. They get to give back. Yes. That is it's so amazing. That yes. is just, it's so cool. Okay. Well, so that's not the only thing that you're up to these days. Yes. And we've just finished, well, at least in our, in our little area, we've just finished prom season. I'm sure that there are proms going on still all over America, but talk it has about to be winding down. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you're exhausted. Talk about Becca's Closet and your work with that ministry. Yes. So Becca's Closet is a nonprofit. It's all over the United States. We just happened, or I just happened to work with the only one in the chapter in Tennessee. And it just happens to be in our amazing little town of Fairview, Tennessee. Right. So, yeah. So um, our chapter has been, I had to ask Janie, um, who originally founded it with um, at our location, it's, it was our 12th this year, 12 years. Oh, wow. So we have house dresses in the parsonage downstairs. And we have about over 3,000 dresses that uh, stay up year round. So, whatever kind of event that someone needs something, we got you covered from long dresses, ball gowns to short dresses for homecoming. So, yeah. yeah. That's and, awesome. And sometimes shoes? Yes, shoes and jewelry and little purse, little handbags are okay. now all the rage. So we've been um, even starting to collect that too at our ministry. How does that work? A girl just makes an appointment with you and, and then, then how does, you know, how does that yeah. go from there? So um, if I can give a little bit of background about what Becca's closet is, um, yeah. her name is, was Becca, that's why we're founded. Uh, she was a freshman in high school and she, in Florida, and she had so many friends that weren't going to prom or special events. And it was because prom dresses are expensive as any mom knows that has a daughter. Yeah. They're pricey. Yeah. And uh, so she started a dress drive at her high school and her freshman year and helped girls that couldn't go to prom or to be able to afford dresses that year. So yeah. um, tragically, and uh, when she was 16, she was killed in a car wreck. Oh. And uh, her mom and dad wanted her legacy to live on. And that's how Becca's Closet became what it is today. Wow. And so, yeah. That's awesome. Oh, wow. So um, how many dresses did you all give out this year? This year, I believe um, it was about 85. Yeah. And how wow. they do it, they go in Becca's Closet. We have a Facebook and Instagram. And you can go on their main site and click our, you can type in whatever state you're in. So, for instance, Tennessee, well, Fairview's chapter will pop up. It'll give you our location of our church, the address, and an email that uh, you can make an appointment. So we have... Um, Wendy, which is amazing, she was the coordinator for all the emails. She she did those and coordinated the times that they would come in. We're open Saturdays. Sometimes we'll do a, a few. I'll take a few Wednesday nights because I'm already over here. We'll take some girls down and get dresses. Yeah. And and then what I do on this end is I coordinate the volunteers. Who's going to come help and uh, meet these girls and help them find dresses every um, year? So we have a bunch of ladies that come in and help with that. And even the amazing ministry that we have from a sweet lady in our church, um, Pam Stover, she actually is a same, she does seamstress for a work. She doesn't charge these girls anything to oh, take up wow. their dresses or anything. And That's I think awesome. this year she, we had 85 and I think she hemmed or did some type of al- um, alteration on at least 40 dresses this year. Oh my, oh my gosh. gosh. Yes. Bless you, Pam. Holy cow. That's amazing. Yes. She's a, she's our amazing little elf. Like that. Was yes. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. great. That's awesome. We probably should be careful who we call elves because yeah. some folks are short. <laughs> they might take that personally. 
right because I'm sure I can get away with it. Yes, you there can. You go. <laughs> we'll, I'm short too. We'll let you do that. I'm only two inches taller. So. That's funny. Well, um, as you know, our ministry, Project Brickworks, um, is all about trying to encourage folks to tap into their God-given talents and gifts. And to what end, of course, is to share the good news of King Jesus. And so um, we believe that that we get to collaborate with God on our brick for him as he builds his kingdom. And part of that is equipping and and developing your talents and gifts and doing the good works that um, you know are set out in advance for us. And so we always love to encourage our guests and our listeners to tap into their talents and gifts. And the first thing in doing that, the first step is to name them, is yeah. to be aware of what they are and to name them and give God all of the honor for that. So uh, I would love to ask you what you think your talents and your gifts are. This is one that's so hard for me because I think we go through seasons that like, I feel like our gifts are stronger in some seasons than others. Totally. Um, definitely right now it's definitely serving. Like I feel like I do serve uh, our community and the people that, um, whether it be with triple negative breast cancer or this amazing Becca's Closet ministry or just, um, hey, can you pick someone or take somebody home? One of my kids like, hey, they want to come to church. Can you go? I'll be their chauffeur. So yeah. I drive around. Service is definitely one. Um, before I used to teach uh, youth um, at our old church. So uh, teaching was definitely one. Um, hospitality. I like to hang out and have fun and uh, just have everybody mingle and stuff. But uh, one of mine is discernment, I think, is too, is one of those where I just, I feel like I'm really into like hearing God speak to me. And um, I got to experience that one, especially going through breast cancer, just mm. how close and intimate of a relationship that I had with him. And that's one thing that I never, hopefully I'll never ever have to have uh, any type of cancer again. But in that, I wouldn't take away the um, relationship that I had during that time with God because he was mm. so audible and um, it was amazing. So, yeah. Wow. That's awesome. Oh, my gosh. Yes. And well, and speaking of God, what um, <laughs> we're doing this new thing in season four where we are asking our guests if there's one thing you could share with our listener about Jesus, what would it be? Okay, that one was kind of tough. So thinking about it, but it would be just, um, just trusting God. Like, I know it's scary, and that was one of the things with with breast cancer. I was scared to death, but I just knew I needed to trust Him because there was nothing that I could do that was going to fix it. Mm. But knowing that He could, and so I just had to like let go, and that's very hard to do. As uh, humans, we're just like, we think we can fix everything and all that. And it's like, this one was like, "Mm -mm, you don't have this, but I do. So just, it was, uh, it was kind of like, you know, walking on water. Like you just, I had to like have my eyes fixed on him weekly, whatever I was facing. Like, because if you think 16 rounds of chemo, that's a long time. You start Mm, thinking, gosh, you're adding it up with your fingers. Like that's next year. I'll be finished with me. It was overwhelming. So I learned just to take one day and one test at a time and just go until I finally got to the finish line. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's probably, hang on a second. It's really important that we say this. You've been uh, cancer free for how long? Yes. So this will be (laughs) getting to be year eight. They do it like, I guess, the day you're diagnosed. Right. Okay. uh, So this year will be year eight. That's incredible. Well, I just wanted to, I also wanted to encourage our listeners that um, if, you are having a hard time trusting God or you don't have a relationship with Jesus or you don't know who Jesus is, we would love to chat with you about that. You can go to Project Brickworks, projectbrickworks.org slash Jesus and you can get in touch with us. We also have some other resources there for you um, to learn more about who Jesus is and and how he can absolutely change your life. And so I just want to encourage you to do that if you're listening. Uh, so Brandy, I wanted to also ask you, um, or uh, do you feel like, because I've, feel this way you know her way better than i do but i feel like you also have the gift of exhortation oh my gosh yes like you're very encouraging yes yes um and so i just wanted to name that about you as well because you didn't name it for yourself (laughs) i know it's so hard to talk about yourself like oh because you don't want to brag you don't feel like it's like but it is a gift that god equipped you with and so you know he can do mighty things if you just 
you know, trust and obey and just mm. go out yeah. on a limb and go out on your faith. So. Amen. Well, you're a busy mom these days. What What are the, what's, what's, uh, what's up in your world right now? I know, I know it's, it's, I'm sure so bittersweet. It's, yes. This coming Friday, my son graduates high school. It's amazing. I can't believe it. I can't believe I'm old enough to have some child. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yes, he uh, graduated. Well, let's see. He got his mechatronics certification technical uh, degree a couple weeks ago from Columbia state. Nice. And then now he's, getting his high school diploma. And uh, then in July, he'll be leaving for the United States Marine Corps uh, basic training in uh, Paris Island, South Carolina. So wow. very big new chapter, like I'm flipping over and about to yes. embark on. So. Well, and so is he. Yes. You know, how brave is he for to, to make this choice and to, I mean, he's a little yes. bit big, big change for him too. Yes, and I was like, it's it's crazy to think back because I have a preschool photo of him after the fact. This is after he's told me he's going into the Marine Corps and stuff like that. I was digging through things for senior year, and I found his little preschool graduation thing. He's in this little cap, and uh, he's by this little picture that he did, and it says on there, I want to be a Marine when I grow up. Yeah. So, like, That's talk insane. about goosebumps. <laughs> wow. Like, no, like, your path. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I, I'm not allowed to post that one yet until he graduates from basic. So I'm going to have it side by side. But oh. so sweet. Yeah. Well, I, I love that. But I mean, it's not like he's been talking about it between then and now. It just, yeah. you it just found it. Last yeah. August, school was about to start. And he's like, Mom, I don't think I want to work in the mechatronics that I'm getting my degree in. I don't think I want to do that forever. He's like, I think I want to go into the Marine Corps. I was like, what? So uh, <laughs> my uh, father-in-law, he was a United States Marine Corps, uh, what do you call that, um, reserve. So okay. he never had to be deployed, but he definitely went through it like the oh, rest yeah. of us do. And um, so that's the only one. And then one of my really good friends, Chanda, her husband, Brian, uh, he was a lifetime. He, he retired at 40 through the Marine Corps and her son's in it now. So um, I'm not unfamiliar with the Marine Corps by right, right. right. But for him wanting to do that, I was just like, what? Why? You know, all this, <laughs> Why? the mom, you know. Yeah. And his um, his response gave me so much peace about it because I was freaked out. Like, you yeah. might not have known it on the outside. I will die on my desk because I'm like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> but, uh, but he was like, mom, you know, I've been blessed my whole life. I've had a great life. And he was like, I just want to give, go and give back and yeah. sacrifice for That's others. Awesome. And yeah. I was like, what do you say to that? No, yeah. you can't do this. <laughs> totally. But, um, what I loved about him wanting to go into the Marine Corps too is like, he's 17. He doesn't turn 18 until May 31st. Like I said, he wanted his dad and mine uh, approval. Nice. For us to go in. And so I respected that because he could have just, you know, next week turned 18 and been like, hey, I'm going to the Marine Corps. But I yeah. love he uh, valued what his dad and I thought about it. Yeah, you know? that's yeah. awesome. I think that's that like, discernment thing. I think he yeah. has a little bit of that too. <clears throat> nice. Good. Well, so just do a real quick plug too about your, um, your work as a saint artist. Yes. So uh, one of the things that I do, just kind of like side things, is. Uh, makeup so it's uh, a 3d cosmetic uh foundation you put it on you look like you paint by number like your face really looks like a paint by number <laughs> you've got like contour so it's really dark and then you had your main color and brightener and cheek and then you take a brush and you blend it all in and you're like how does that make this so <laughs> right I, that. So yeah. I look like a, a getting a paint by number and then you get to look like this so that's yeah, one of the things <laughs> yeah that you I look love great it's great. And it's also uh, being triple negative breast cancer survivor. You want to put good things on your face and it's really mm. uh, a really good skin care or makeup to put on your face. So yeah, that's yeah. awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. And then well, right. I was going to say about Izzy, we just finished flag football. Mm, so our, yep. our uh, county is, um, was an inaugural season for girls flag football, which is pretty cool. The Tennessee Titans like yes. sponsored it this year for all Wilson County high schools. And she got to participate in it a few weeks ago. Um, we had the championship. We uh, 
lost by one point and that was <laughs> out. So we placed third and we're all excited. So Wow. Yeah, but the game before was super exciting. It was. I, it was a nail into- biter. Yeah, we went into overtime. That was awesome. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. I love that. That was fun. The underdog beat out the number one team. But yeah, so anyhow, there was that. I feel like underdog. <laughs> yes, we love underdog yeah. stories. Good. Yeah. So tell us how folks can get in touch with you. All right. So um, basically my name, Brandy Mage, or on Facebook and Instagram, I go by Nash Mama 78 Um for my uh, saint makeup that you can paint by number on your face. I know that's very intriguing and that you'll want to try it. <laughs> it's, uh, it's still my name. It's brandymage.saintofficial.com and you can click on my link. Perfect. Amazing. Yep. Yes. Brandy, thank you so much for sharing your story with us and our listeners. And it's just very encouraging and um, your faith is beautiful. And I, I think just hearing how much you trust in God and, and, Bre- and Spencer was right about you know, being excited to see how God's using you. He obviously is. And, um, I know it's amazing. It's incredible. He uses all things for his, his glory. And I think that that's incredible. And, um, you're a testament to that. So thank you so much for sharing with us today. It was way way fun talking to you today. (laughs) Well, awesome. Well, thank you so much for having me and I hope you have a wonderful season four. Got amazing people on your shows and it's just um, something for everybody. Yeah, Amazing. Thanks. Thank you so much. That was super sweet. You're we'll welcome. talk to you later. Have a great Bye. day. Bye. Bye. Thanks, guys, for listening to our chat with Brandy. This podcast is made possible through generous listeners and friends like you, and we are so very grateful to all of our supporters. If you would like to sponsor an episode, head over to the collaborationconversation.org and click sponsor an episode. For more information on Project Brickworks, visit us online at projectbrickworks.org. Subscribe to our newsletter or text BRICK to 55498 to get the latest news and updates. We love you all. Be blessed, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.